<laughs> You're in my way. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. It is week 47 of the 52 Sunday Dinners Project. And if you look around me, you'll notice that we are not in my dining room. We are in fact in my Nani's dining room. If you saw last week's video, you got a little introduction to Nani at the end of the video. And I decided to come up here and spend a little bit of time with her. So this is where week 47 is going to be made. And hopefully if Nani feels up to being on camera, you'll get to get her opinion of how this dinner turns out. If this is your first time joining us, hello, my name is Ashley. I'm a registered dietitian and I love all things vintage. I've combined those two things, food and vintage, to bring you this, the 52 Sunday Dinners Project. This project was inspired by this cookbook. This is the 52 Sunday Dinners Cookbook. Women's World Magazine put this out, I believe in 1924. We started this project in August, which means instead of starting at week one and going through to week 52, we started in the 30s and we're going to go around to August of 2024. This week for dinner, we're starting with Duchess soup. For the main course, we will have a loin of pork, which is roasted with apples and sweet potatoes. With that, we'll be having steamed Hubbard squash, Although I've searched high and low for Hubbard squash in New York, in Pennsylvania, and I just could not find any. And so instead we'll be having acorn squash. After that, our palate cleanser will be celery, followed by steamed Boston brown bread, canned peach and cherry cake, and of course coffee. So having said all of that, we're going to slap an apron on and get into Nani's kitchen. When I decided I was coming to Nani's house to cook, I had a little box put together with some of the ingredients and sitting right beside where I was packing that box currently in my dining room is the graham flour. So I have this whole wheat flour. It's definitely not the same thing, but it's the closest I could get well, I'm away from home and we're working in a different kitchen. So this is just gonna have to do for today, but I know it's going to skew the results a little bit. So we'll keep that in mind when we're tasting. <music> it says to use a coffee can I don't know that they make big metal coffee cans anymore I have this larger tomato can I have this baking tube here and I isn't that cute with a little heart I have some baking tubes shaped like stars and flowers also I might try those as well because I think this batter is gonna be way too much to fit into just these two so we'll see how much space we have, how much batter we have, and then uh, we'll decide, I guess, how many more molds we need for this bread. I found these baking tubes that I showed you, this cute little heart that I was using and my other shapes. I don't know if we're gonna be using them. Um, this would be the first time I used them. I got them at a thrift store and if you can see, it's just kind of um, seeping out of the bottom here. So I think we're gonna go with something else. We're going to experiment a little bit here. I found this mixing bowl and this mixing bowl was a, you said a wedding gift? Yeah, the mixer was. Uh, this mixer was a wedding gift for Nani. How many years ago did you marry Grandpa? 60 years ago. 60 years ago. So this bowl is at least 60 years old. It seems to be close to the right 
size and shape of what a coffee can would be, maybe a little bit smaller, and we think that it might work. We're gonna try and steam it. This seems like it'd be okay to put in a kettle to boil. We're gonna find out together. recipe it calls for a biscuit tin and for a second I thought well maybe they mean a muffin tin but I don't think so and thinking about I guess what I associate biscuit tins with I think about you know the things that we now put little cookies in or a sewing kit that used to hold cookies so I assume that what they mean is something that is metal and maybe a little bit deeper than this and probably square but this is what i have here now so this is what we're going to use and hopefully the results are somewhere close to what they intended We're ready to try everything and Nani is joining us for dinner. So oh. you're going to get her opinion on what things taste like and look like in her impression as well as mine. So we're starting with the Duchess soup. Duchess soup? Duchess soup. Okay. Have you ever heard of such a thing? No, I haven't. 
It smells very milky. I expected it to smell a little more like onion than it does. It, it definitely smells milky and almost a little sweet to me. But I'll give you it know, a try. There's a, there's a definite flavor in here that I'm looking for. Are you catching it yet? What do you think it no, is? No, I'm trying to figure it out. Okay. I know the flavor and I'm just... What do you think of the soup overall so far? I think it's good. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's very, very good. Mm -hmm. The main ingredient in it is onions. You're supposed to cook onions down and then mash them, strain them through a strainer. And then you take what has been strained oh. and you cook it with milk. And do you want me to tell you the secret ingredient? Mm -hmm. Mace. Mace. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. That's what it is. Yeah. It tastes a little bit like, like nutmeg. Mm. Did you find mace in my cabinet? I sure did. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any mace in my cabinet. Mm. I just purchased I'm some. I'm one up on you. You are one up on me. <laughs> yeah, overall, I think this is really good. Mm -hmm. the, the mace which I think just reminds me of nutmeg. If you've never had mace before, it tastes like mm -hmm. nutmeg to me. Uh, it does taste like fall or maybe even a little bit of winter. Yeah, I mean, I, I got that flavor immediately, but mm -hmm. and it wasn't onions. So. No, I don't, I don't really taste onions much in here at all. No. Which is disappointing because I love mm -hmm. onions. I know you do. <laughs> onions frying in butter. Mm -hmm. or olive oil the best smell in the it mm -hmm. smells like this house when i talk about all of my food memories and i talk about the smells that i enjoy and all these different things the house that you're seeing right now and the woman you're seeing right now mm -hmm. <laughs> this is where all those good mm -hmm. memories were made and all the things that i talk about now you can picture them a little bit better it's mm -hmm. been around this table that <clears throat> Almost every single one of my Christmas meals and until very recently, every one of my Easter meals and Thanksgiving meals mm -hmm. have all been around. Well, this table has been extended all the way to the end of that table because mm -hmm. we have a giant family gathering. Look at that crust. Doesn't that look beautiful? Yeah. Show you a little closer what it looks like inside. It's steaming hot. Is this piece okay? Do you like the nice crusty end piece? Interesting meals they served in the yeah? 1920s. Mm -hmm. Do you want some gravy? Oh, yes. Who did this belong to? Is this your mother's? Yes. Okay, what do you think about the way everything looks, the presentation? Very nice. I'm going to start with the pork. Yeah, that's what I was starting with, too. Looks good. Mm -hmm. It looks like it was cooked very well. Mm -hmm. My oven did a good job. Your oven did a beautiful job. It smells good. You can smell the apple in there a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the crust on there, it's a nice crunchy, that flour mm -hmm. made a nice crunchy crust. And I got more of the crust than you did. That's true. Oh, the apple is applesauce now. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I made you applesauce also. Mm -hmm. um, the pork is very tender and... With the apples, they cook down in there so much that I think with the gravy, there's a lot of the apple juice in that gravy, and this gravy is a little bit sweet. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet, actually. It tastes very strong and distinctly of apples. This is very good. Mm -hmm. And the roast is just so tender and yes. just nice. The sweet potatoes smell very good. They smell very sweet. Isn't that mm. sweet? It is sweet. Oh, they're delicious. They cook down very, very well. Uh, I think they pair really well with the apples. They probably also even got a little bit sweeter with that sweet apple juice and apple sauce mm -hmm. mixed in there. So this very, very fall-like. I got uh, the crust mm -hmm. on mine, a nice chunk of it. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Did the crust melt at all? Mm -mm. It just tasted perfect. Okay. That is extremely high praise coming from Nani. It tasted perfect. I have that on camera. 
So I think I'll bring that out mm. every time we're at a meal. If it's not perfect, I'm not going to tell you it's perfect. <laughs> The squash also smells really good. And again, we used acorn squash in place of the Hubbard squash because we couldn't find Hubbard squash anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I looked and it said acorn squash was an okay mm -hmm. substitute for- And this acorn squash was from the garden. Ooh, this came from your garden. Mm -hmm. Well, look at that, even better. Now that's interesting. Did you taste the squash? Oh, you did mm -hmm. taste it. Mm -hmm. Did you notice anything different about it than normal? Taste it again. <clears throat> bossy, bossy. Taste that. Does there, is there anything that seems out of the ordinary to you or does it seem just normal? It seems normal. I mean, I usually eat it, as I told you earlier, mm -hmm. baking it in the oven with brown sugar and butter. Mm -hmm. But there was vinegar in this. Oh, I don't taste the vinegar. Mm -hmm. I taste it just slightly. I didn't think that I would. Mm -hmm. It wasn't much in there, but I feel like you can just taste it like mm -hmm. right in the middle of your tongue a little bit. Mm. My taste buds are old, you know, you can't. <laughs> <clears throat> They're old, but still very critical. Mm -hmm. mm. And do you remember your mom making meals like this? Mm -hmm. What kind of stuff My mom, mom never cut? made gravy. Really? You know, my mom never made gravy. I mean, it's not an Italian thing. Okay. And so one day I was, it was one of the holidays, Christmas holiday, and I had the um, drippings on the stove mm -hmm. cook, cooking down so I could make the gravy. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I turned around and they were gone. And my mother thought I was just had them on there to loosen everything. And she took them and washed the whole thing. It was a Christmas Day dinner. Oh, I was panicked. Oh, no. What did you she do? Was so, oh, we sort of made an artificial gravy of some sort. We did something. Yeah, but, but, I mean, you can always, you know, impl um, mm -hmm. uh, you know impl implement something. But anyway, it was, it was just, I mean, it was Christmas dinner, you know, and I, and usually, you know, Christmas, I mean, there must have been 20 people coming and. Boston brown bread. It feels extremely dense. Like this little thing, I feel like I could do bicep curls with it. And it looks, it actually looks extremely dense and the, there's really no crumb on it. I don't know if that's normal. I've never had it before. I've seen it advertised in cans at the grocery store. Seems I've had it years ago, but I don't really remember. I was going to ask you, do you remember? Is it supposed mm -hmm. to be like this? It's interesting, the colors in it are Again, I don't know if this is normal. I'm sure many of you at home have tried it, have seen it, you know what it should look like, and I have a feeling what it should look like is not this. And maybe that's partially because we didn't have graham flour. I left my graham flour at home. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that's partially why. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, we have been trying this the whole time, talking about it, describing it to you, and I never hit the record button. We've just been talking away amongst ourselves. So um, I guess I'll give you the, the gist of it. This is what the inside looks like. It's definitely distinctly, disc not discolored, but there, there's a lot of different colors. And I don't think that this is what it is supposed to have turned out like. And you said, this is not the brown bread that I, you remember. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking back maybe 50 years when I've had it. Okay. I can't, you know, so it's... And it had probably a more bread-like consistency, yeah. you think? Yes. Yeah. I mean... This is very mm -hmm. dense. 
I the think, tasty. Yes. The consistency reminded me a little bit of Play-Doh. And the smell, it smelled like molasses and Play-Doh to me. Tastes like molasses, though. Not Play-Doh. No, it doesn't taste like Play-Doh. You know what else the consistency reminds me of? Looking at it now is a very thick pumpkin pie. If you had cooked pumpkin pie a little too mm -hmm. long. I was going to say it's not the same color. No. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. A little orangey. Mm -hmm. Very dark. If you had a lot of cinnamon in that pumpkin pie. Uh-huh. But although it didn't turn out probably the way it is supposed to, it's really good. My expectation looking at that and smelling it was that it was not going to taste good at all. See, I told you it's my house. <laughs> the consistency is very, like I think I said, it's like a slice of bread pudding. Mm -hmm. It's soft. It's a little squishy almost. It's dense, like a very thick pudding. It's really good. And with butter, it's even better. I know. Better with butter? All right. Last is the dessert. Oh, I'm waiting. Oh, okay. Oh, let me serve you, madame. Well, absolutely. <laughs> we should try that big one just to see what the inside looks like. Oh, that's a good idea. I am always full of good ideas. Mm. Did I show you the bottom of it? Yes, you showed it to me already. Mm. Oh. I can smell it from here. Can you smell it? No. Mm. But maybe the inside isn't burned. I think just the bottom is burned. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a thick baby. Ooh. Yeah, the inside of this looks very similar. Mm -hmm. This is the peach and cherry cake. What do you think about mm -hmm. how that looks? I'm waiting for it. Ah. Well, tell me your impression of what it looks like. It looks it looks like a pineapple upside down cake. Yeah. <laughs> Said to do it about a half an inch thick. That's thick. That is really thick for a dough mm -hmm. or a cake. It was a cake dough, not a cake batter. And looking mm -hmm. at it, I don't know if it's completely done inside, which is usually okay by me because that's kind of how I like mine. It definitely smells very peachy. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, when I was looking- Oh, these are peaches? I thought they were pineapples. No, that's a peach. Oh, it's a peach upside down cake, okay. Yes. Mm. It smells like peaches and biscuits to me. Mm-hmm. It's very cute. What do you, what do you think about the taste? It's tasty. Yeah? Is the dough done? Dough could be done a little bit more. Hmm. Oh. It tastes like peaches and biscuits. This tastes like a biscuit dough. Mm -hmm. Does it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is funny because it said to bake it in a biscuit tin. And when I looked mm -hmm. later, I thought about it after. I don't remember if I should. Well, obviously, it's right there. We had talked about maybe it was a muffin tin. We weren't sure what to cook it in. <clears throat> and then I thought about biscuit tins, you know, like when you would go to get a cookie out of a biscuit tin and it would be a sewing kit instead. Mm -hmm. Did your mom keep all her sewing supplies in little <laughs> cookie tins? Um, but a biscuit tin could be a tin that people make biscuits in, you know, when they make them and put them in individual so I think the the, the the pan you used was appropriate. Okay. Because if you make biscuits, sometimes you have all the biscuits lined up in the pan. And oh, okay. Yes, yeah, it's very different. Mm-hmm. Not something I think I would associate with dessert as much. Almost, mm -hmm. this reminds me of a breakfast. Although, I guess at this point, Americans are notorious for having very sweet breakfasts, so probably this wouldn't be uh, a good breakfast for other people. 
for people back in the day, but I guess we as Americans eat very sugary breakfast. But this this reminds me more of a breakfast. <clears throat> or I want this dough with chicken. Do you want to do the honors of giving an overall impression of this meal and what you thought? I thought I thought it was um, uh, an, an excellent meal. I think in today's age for a presentation, you would need really some kind of a green vegetable or some vegetable to accompany it. You had you had the apples, I know, on that, but but I think that you need just just a, a green vegetable of okay. some sort. A little more than the celery. A little more than the celery. The celery okay. was considered as a salad part. part. Okay. But I, I would say that I, I was, would like, um, I mean, I liked having the soup. Mm-hmm. Without the soup added to it. Yeah. And and um, certainly you had the sweet potatoes and the um, apples around the there, but I just think it needed a vegetable. Okay. You mean more like a green? Uh, more like a green vegetable. Like a kale I, or a collard or? Yeah, a kale, a collard or anything, an endive. Okay. I mean, for me, which probably wouldn't be, I mean, I wouldn't even mind a broccoli rob, but I mean, that's not something that's to everyone's taste because of the bitter taste to it. Okay. You're too sweet already. You need a oh, little bit. absolutely. Bitter. I mean, did you notice that? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I would certainly agree. I think the nutmeg and the soup paired really well with the pork and the sweet mm-hmm. potatoes and that celery, I and, know you didn't have the celery, but the celery broke it up very nicely. I know. I mean, the apple was like the applesauce with pork. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it just, it went very well. Yes. And I thought the final dessert, the brown bread, I really enjoyed the brown bread. Mm-hmm. And, and um, I, th- I think it went well with the whole meal, with the pork and that. And I think following that, I'll give a very general nutrition mm-hmm. thought here. Um, and I think... The I would agree. The vegetable, there were sweet potatoes and squash and the celery, so that was good. And I like the mix mm-hmm. of cooked versus raw. Uh, we've seen that a lot in these meals. Right. There's cooked and raw vegetables. I really like that. Mm-hmm. And the fruit in the pork as well as in the dessert. Something else that I've noticed about these menus is a lot of them are very, very soft. And except for that crunchy raw vegetable toward the end well that the crunchy top on that oh. that roast pork you can't beat either but i mean mm-hmm. i think i mean it could be back in those days people didn't have the uh dental care that we have now mm-hmm. certainly so things are probably a, a little bit softer for mm-hmm. the digestive system yeah. and something that was normal uh, more normal normalized back then, which is even before your time and into your time too, but is not as common today, is that multi-generations were living together. That's true. So these meals weren't just the nuclear family, Mm -hmm. the parents and small children. Oftentimes it would have been the grandparents or great-grandparents. You had you had several generations. It was a, a mm-hmm. different. As I told you, my grandmother lived with, with us when she came from Italy, and she was you know she was by herself. And she mm-hmm. lived with us. Yeah. Which was a great experience having her live with, mm-hmm. with you know. Yes. So. You would agree, grandmothers are the best. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, grandmothers are the best. I've been very lucky to have you. Mm-hmm. Well, show it sometime. You know, I mean. <laughs> Okay, maybe not always lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm teasing now, and you know that. Oh, are you? Are you? Oh, I just like to come here to torture myself. I'm a glutton for punishment. I thought it was more you like to torture me. Oh, well, that's true. Very true. So. <laughs> it's my favorite hobby. I know that. <laughs> um. Anyhow, back to the nutrition breakdown of this. The brown bread, if we're going to have bread, I like the whole wheat option of the flour, kind of the mixes of those flours mm-hmm. and that molasses. If you're using the uh, black strap, back strap, I want to say back strap like I'm 
uh, butchering a deer, but blackstrap molasses, there's a good amount of iron in that if you're going to have a, a non-animal source of iron, that's a good source right there. Um, I'd say, yeah, nutrition-wise, this one is, last week I think I gave it a 5 out of 10. I think this one I would give it maybe a 6 or a 7 out of 10. There were some things that I agree with you. I could see a little bit of an improvement, but overall I think it was pretty good. I, I think you can't beat that roast was exceptional. Yes. Yes. You know, I did the roast mm -hmm. was, uh, I mean, I'm going to try that roast myself. You have to give me mm -hmm. the recipe. Okay. It's right yeah. here. Watch, Nani, watch the video and you'll have the recipe. Oh. Oh. You forced me to do all these things? <laughs> mm. The other thing I like about this pork is, as far as cost goes, some of these other meals recently have been very expensive. This pork was, the whole pork loin was under $10. I think it was $9.50 something. So it was very economical. The acorn squash came from your garden, so that was free. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the dessert came, I, I think the, the fruit was the most expensive thing, and it was in a can, so it was only a couple dollars. So putting all of this together, this meal might have only cost us $30 for six people to put together, maybe $35 to put together to serve six people. And I think the amount that we have here certainly could have served more than six people. This pork loin is now- It's huge. It it's is huge. huge. It's a humongous pork mm -hmm. loin. And I, I think this could serve 12 people. This could be another meal mm -hmm. tomorrow, a whole meal for six more people tomorrow. This week was great. Next week is the big one. I think next week is what they would consider their um, Thanksgiving meal. Mm -hmm. And it includes a roast goose. Can you imagine roasting a goose today? I, I, haven't roast, I've, I have roasted goose, but uh, as I told you before, a, a goose is very greasy. Okay, well, we're going to find out how this goose is today. Uh, we're going to make a Lady Baltimore cake. Oh boy, I haven't done that in a long time. And on this goose is going to go an apple prune sauce. Oh. Oh. It's a big menu. So that is just the start of what we are making. So join us next week where we make an entire roasted goose dinner and see how it turns out. What shape do you like to roll these out in? I, I, the long rope. Okay. And then you cut them mm -hmm. and fry them. Okay. Are you going to cut and I'm going to fry, or are you going to fry and I'm going to cut? You tell me what you want me to do, and that's what I will do. I can do both, I'm sure. Can't we roll it out, have them cut ahead of time? Can't we roll it out yeah. first? I guess. Or do you want to... Both of us roll together. Would you like to do teamwork? Huh? Teamwork? Yeah. And then we'll try it and you'll say, oh, this one is not so good. That one must be yours. Oh, this one is delicious. This one must be mine. Well, naturally, we can't expect <laughs> any different. <laughs>